Hi there, it's me, Megan, and I welcome you back as we progress through the Learn to Monetize More video series. This tutorial will teach you how to set up competition between AdSense and third-party ad networks in DFP. The beauty of DFP is its ability to help you manage your inventory from various sources. One way to take advantage of this management flexibility is through the popular strategy of allowing AdSense ads to compete with ads of third-party ad networks. This is accomplished with just a few clicks in DFP. Allow us to walk you through those steps in this video. Let's begin. Of course, the golden rule for publishers is to serve the most valuable ad that plays the highest CPM. It's easy to sell non-guaranteed inventory to the highest bidder when it comes to AdSense and third-party ad networks. The logic is simple. If AdSense can pay you more for a particular ad slot, then an AdSense ad will serve. Conversely, if a third-party ad network can pay more for that same ad slot, then the third-party ad will serve. In this way, you can always maximize your earnings of your unsold ad inventory. If you have access to AdExchange, AdX, we recommend running AdX on dynamic allocation instead of AdSense. Why do we suggest this approach? Because AdX simply performs better when it comes to dynamic allocation. If you opt to run AdX instead of AdSense, then please remember to disable all of the AdSense ad units and allow AdX to compete for all targeted ad slots running dynamic allocation. Before jumping in, it's important to reiterate the basics of AdSense requirements. Google AdSense content will only appear in an ad unit if certain conditions are met. These conditions are, the ad unit must be enabled for AdSense, the competing line items type is network, bulk, or price priority, the cost per thousand impressions, or CPM, of the AdSense ad must be higher than the competition, and finally, the inventory will not serve on a mobile app. With these requirements met, we begin our lesson on how to compete AdSense with third-party ad networks in our DFP account under the Delivery tab. Locate the order for which you will be creating the new line item. Under the chosen order, create a new line item, name the new line item, and specify the size. Next, navigate to the Settings tab within the chosen line item. Under Settings, we must ensure that the line item we want to compete with AdSense has the right priority type. As mentioned at the start of this lesson, these eligible priority types include Network, Bulk, and Price Priority. Let's run through each of these eligible line item types individually, beginning with Network. Now, if we want to choose Network, we must specify the percentage of the remaining impressions we'd like the line item to fulfill. We'll also need to set the cost per thousand impressions, or CPM, for the network priority type. Let's do that now. The next eligible type is bulk. If we choose bulk, we must specify the volume of impressions this line item will be scheduled to serve. As with network, we must set up the CPM rate. And finally, the last line item is price priority, which is the most optimal line item for non-Google demand sources. If we select Price Priority, then DFP will deliver the top paying line item first, then go to the second highest paying line item for the next ad unit on the page, and so on. How do we ask DFP to make this decision? Again, we must specify the value CPM, which is the manually entered CPM value. We recommend entering the actual CPM value, or the real CPM value if it has passbacks. We can also moderate delivery by scheduling the duration and caps on our end. Because publishers often have unsold ad inventory, we recommend when it comes to running price priority line items to compete them against AdSense ads to maximize the performance of that unsold inventory. At the beginning of the lesson, I said that when running dynamic allocation, AdX often performs better than AdSense. I wanted to touch on why this is the case with a few points. Although less well-known among publishers, AdX actually has a more sophisticated targeting technology and offers a wider breadth of optimization options when compared to AdSense. AdX offers all the same advertisers that AdSense does in their advertising pool, and much more. That means more big brand advertisers and other demand sources to compete among your undersold ad placements. Here's a tip. When pushing AdX ads, ensure dynamic allocation is set up at the line item level rather than the ad unit level. Targeting at the line item level tends to yield the best results. Again, please do remember to disable AdSense ads on these units. 
Failing to do so would dilute the auction dynamics and yield lower performing ads. Before finalizing this lesson, I'd like to add that you can create as many line items as necessary to ensure that you consistently earn the highest CPM rate for your inventory. DFP is really a fantastic platform in this way, always committed to serving the highest paying AdSense ad as available or allow your third party ad network to serve their winning ad if it pays a higher CPM. As a publisher, please don't miss out on the advantage to enabling third-party ads to compete with Google AdSense ads. It means a larger pool of advertisers competing for your ad space and higher website revenue per ad slot. Of course, this goes without saying that the better quality your third-party advertisers competing for your ad space are, the better quality and higher CPM ads Google AdSense will serve. If you haven't created an account with AdExchange, you can do so here via Monetize More. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Also, learn to monetize more by watching our tutorial series and reading our latest ad optimization tips. Please subscribe to our blog to receive periodic updates. Thanks. We'll catch you next time.